Whatever you may think of his views on other topics, comedian and talk show host Bill Maher is possibly the only person on television who doesn't sound like a complete moron when he discusses jihad, Islamic law, and problems in the Muslim world. I suspect that there are other people on television who agree with him, but they keep their mouths shut or toe the party line because they don't want to lose their jobs. Perhaps they should try to figure out how Bill Maher is still on television, figure out how he gets away with it, take some notes, start speaking the truth, and stop embarrassing themselves. In a recent episode of Real Time on HBO, Maher drew some life lessons from Afghanistan. The first lesson is that whatever problems you've got to complain about here in the West, you've got a lot to be thankful for. By the way, Maher curses a lot. I'm not going to bother censoring him. But this is a Christian channel, so I'm giving you a language warning here. Take it, Bill. Watching the shit go down in Afghanistan, I was reminded lately of every conversation I've ever had with an immigrant, almost all of which, if we got to really talking, included the notion, oh, you people have no idea. All you do is bitch about and badmouth your own country, but if you knew about the country I came from, you'd stop shitting on your own. Then he turns to the case of an Afghan comedian who was murdered by the Taliban. Last week, the Taliban murdered a comedian. His name was Nazar Muhammad, and he made up funny songs on TikTok. They forced him into a car, tortured, and then executed him. A comedian. A thing like that hits a little close to home for me. Now, Mar, like Nazar Muhammad, is a comedian, and he knows what it's like to be targeted by the government. I've had two presidents up my ass. This one warned me to stop speaking my mind. They need to, to watch what they say, watch what they do. And this is not a time for remarks like that. There never is. And this one sued me over a joke. <laughs> but a comedian being targeted by U.S. presidents is a bit different from a comedian being targeted by Taliban jihadis. Neither experience was pleasant, but I didn't have to worry about being dragged till I'm dead behind a Toyota Tacoma. Have a little perspective about the stuff we howl about here. I'm s Make sure college students get the point, Bill. I'm sorry your professor said something you didn't like. That won't be a problem with the Taliban because you're not allowed to go to school. In Saudi Arabia, Grown women can be jailed for doing the kind of things we think of as routine without the permission of a male guardian. College students in the U.S. don't see how blessed they are. But women in Afghanistan see it. There's a reason Afghan mothers are handing their babies to us. Right. And... Should we take the baby, Bill? Should we help the mom? And we should take them. Americans right now should take in Afghan refugees into their homes and into their neighborhoods. But how much do we really mean that? And I'm sure everyone who just clapped is thinking the same thing. Yes, someone who isn't me should definitely do that. It seems that we generally mean well, but that we're human and we make mistakes. But that's something we can work with. We're not the bad guys. Oppression is what we were trying to stop in Afghanistan. We failed, but any immigrant will tell you we've largely succeeded here. And yet the overriding thrust of current woke ideology is that America is rotten to the core, irredeemably racist from the moment it was founded, and so oppressive, sexist, and homophobic, we can't find a host for the Oscars or Jeopardy. <laughs> So we struggle finding squeaky clean hosts for our shows. Meanwhile, in Afghanistan. Have you ever heard of honor killings? Public beheadings, throwing gay men off of roofs, arranged marriages to minors, state sanctioned wife beating, female genital mutilation, marriage by capture? Oh, everyone who watches my channel has heard of such things. Now, what's the takeaway? 
What's the lesson of Afghanistan? Maybe it's that everyone from the giant dorm room bitch session that is the internet should take a good look at what real oppression looks like. America may not be the country of your faculty lounge and Twitter dreams, but no one here tries to escape by hanging on to an airplane. We sure don't, Bill. Now, none of this is to say that you shouldn't point out problems in the United States, in Canada, in Europe. Problems need to be addressed. We should always be striving for excellence. But we should also have a ton of gratitude for the blessings we have. When we deal with problems that we face, gratitude is the buffer that keeps the problems from producing unbridled resentment, hostility, and rage. So whatever you're dealing with, always remember that you could have it much, much worse. In another time, in another place, your life could be completely controlled by the commands of an illiterate 7th century Arabian caravan robber. Be thankful that it isn't. This is a problem of religion, there's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah?